Hello students, welcome to SAM classes. Today we'll be doing the concept video on semiconductors. So we'll be going in shots, whatever is needed, point to point basis. Nothing here and there, we wanted to give a lot. Since we are very much struck with the time situation, we don't have much option. So I'm giving you whatever is needed for your semiconductors part to score good marks. Three questions comes. So let's see, let's complete the chapter. So first thing is based on the property, we divide semiconductor, we divide a material on conductor, semiconductor insulator. Now after that, based on band theory. Now what is this band theory? Now electrons, they interact with different, different other electrons of inner crystal of other atoms. So what they do, they have their own energy levels. When we make a collection of these energy levels, okay, we make it a band, not like a guitar band or something like that, but okay. Now we have two kinds of band majorly. One is valence band. It is the energy band of valence electrons and the conduction band, the band above the valence band. Now, the gap between valence band and conduction band is known as energy band gap or forbidden gap also. This you can write it as forbidden gap also, okay? Uh, sorry for the spelling mistakes, okay? Now, for a conductor, either the energy band is overlapping, like just touching, or they're overlapping, okay? Uh, clear? Now, for an insulator, the band gap, there is a gap between them, and the gap distance, what is it, the energy band gap value, is more than 3 electron volt. So, any electron which can't jump, they don't have that much of energy so that they can jump from the valence band to the conduction band and conduct the electricity. Valence band always is completely filled in this and conduction band is completely empty. In case of semiconductor, what happens? The valence band and the conduction band, the gap between them is less than 3 electron volt. So the moment we supply some energy to the electrons in the valence band, they're able to jump to the conduction band and they're able to conduct. Now, based on what you say, semiconductors we can further classify in two types intrinsic and extrinsic intrinsic means pure semiconductor here we don't mix up anything and by increasing temperature we can increase the conductivity we can't do anything else other than that now because we know simple increase the temperature increase the kinetic energy of the molecules and the electrons can jump that is one thing what about extrinsic it is an impure form what we do here we do doping we add impurity now how can we add impurity let's say for a semiconductor we either take silicon or germanium now for this silicon or germanium the moment they are doped with a trivalent either barium aluminium or gallium they give a p type and whenever they are doped with a pentavalent means this has five electrons this has four electrons so one extra electron is this simple this has five electron pentavalent this has four electron so one extra electron so it creates an n type this has four electron this has three electrons so one extra holes will create a P type okay so holes are basically nothing but absence of electrons holes are holes are basically nothing but absence of electrons clear everybody okay a lot of times you'll see they'll be drawing like one electron was there it left its place so what it did it created a hole hole is nothing but a vacant empty space created by an electron that's simple now what is the difference between p type and type just go through you can take the screenshots of this page okay and go through the theory i'm not explaining it same thing okay p type Trivalent impurities, n-type pentavalent. Impurity is called acceptor impurity because it accepts. And this is called donor because it gives more of electrons. P-type, the holes acts as the majority. N-type, the electrons are the majority. Okay. Same thing. And the, if the holes are majority, so conduction is due to holes. Here, electrons are majority. Conduction is due to electrons. Now, this formula is very, very, very important. See, Ni is nothing but number density of intrinsic charge carriers. Means before doping, how many number of electrons and holes together, all the charge carriers with it, that is known as Ni. Now, after doping, we'll have any number of electrons and number of holes, okay? That is the number of, uh, what do you say, number density of electrons and holes after doping. We get that. And these two are equal. Ni square is equal to Ne into NH. That's it. So this formula, one question you can expect. If the number of electrons is more than number of holes, it's n-type, the number of electrons. The number of holes is more than the number of electrons, p-type. That's simple. Clear. So the whole thing is this part is important. This part of the formula is important. The rest of there is theory. You can just go through that. Okay. What is p-n junction? Take a p, take a n, merge it. You get a p-n junction. Now, how do we merge it? We just don't come and paste it. We have to what is a heat it up at a very high temperature like 500 degrees Celsius or 600 degrees Celsius in a furnace. 
okay blast furnace that we can do that again is a theory part we'll go more in details when we'll be doing like with having time okay as of now we have very less time so let me just explain you what is the gist of the chapter and what you need to know see whenever we have a p and a n okay let me write it here no i didn't write let's say i have a p here i have a n here okay so what is happening is electrons from n they're coming and merging at p at the holes they're basically coming and occupying that space so that's why it is known as depletion region that's why it is known as depletion layer or depletion region because here electrons and holes they deplete now now due to the depletion what happens they create a charge plus and minus so what it creates a potential difference electric field so the potential difference developed across this region depletion region is known as potential barrier okay and barrier you can understand like this like let's say one positive is charge is there now it has to go this side it has to have a what resistance from this so that's why it's a barrier okay now what is the symbol of p n junction this is the symbol of p n junction everybody one p p we denote by this and n like this okay so p n junction symbol is this next what is biasing the moment we have a diode we connect it with a battery the moment we have a diode we connect with the battery with the wires so whenever we connect a p to the positive side of the battery it's called forward biased and n to the negative side so it's forward biased okay p to positive n to negative directly you can remember it's forward biased what happens the opposite n to positive and p to negative it calls for a what is a reverse bias so here understand see this positive is what is it attracting the what is the n type towards itself and this negative is attracting the positive all towards itself so this region its width increases its increases here this negative is pushing it more towards n and positive is pushing the p towards so it depletes okay so that's the width of the depletion region here decreases here it is increases okay next we have a diode what happens in the forward bias region okay when it is forward bias after a certain well it starts conducting huge so that's why the principle is principle let me write with normal pen the principle for this is for a diode it conducts when forward biased and it acts as an insulator or like doesn't conduct when reverse bias now you'll say sir it here also it conducts sir, at a very high voltage yes it conducts but the voltage that we are giving is like somewhere around 70 80 volt and that also depends so that is a very huge voltage okay so that we take it as non conductivity only okay next diode as a rectifier what is a rectifier sir? one who device which converts ac to dc what is it ac to dc alternating single what is a current to direct current okay clear everyone now what is the property here as a diode we use it conducts in forward bias doesn't conducts in reverse bias see we have a ac now here what happens we have a diode this diode when in the first case it is forward bias so it will allow this positive part of the ac to go and we'll get an output the moment it comes to the negative part now again it is forward bias so it will say no illa illa i won't allow what this to pass because the current is negative so it becomes a reverse bias it acts like a reverse bias so here in reverse bias condition we don't get any current again in this case it is forward biased okay again we get a current here so that's why all the forward bias all the positive cycles we get an output all the negative we are not getting okay so that's why it is said that a diode it is like a half wave rectifier we can write it as half wave rectifier okay so it's a half wave rectifier in this case we have one diode okay so when it is forward bias it allows the current to pass and when it is reverse bias it doesn't so in this case in the second stay what is the case it doesn't allow because it is reverse bias because negative will be what is it coming in at contact with the positive and positive with the negative so it will be reverse bias it won't allow the current to pass same concept we extend in a what is a full wave rectifier here we have two diode so whenever it is whenever the first part in this first case what happens it is what is a forward bias with d1 and reverse bias with d2 so d1 will allow the current to pass and will get an output second case now it is forward bias with d2 and reverse bias with d1 now here in this case what is happening it is forward bias with d2 d2 forward bias and reverse bias d1 so reverse bias won't conduct d2 will send it so d2 we got so in all of the cycle either positive or negative either d1 will send or d2 will send 
So we'll get the output d1 or d2, d1 or d2. Okay. So very simple. Same concept. If it is forward bias, it will conduct. If it is reverse bias, it won't conduct. Up to electronic devices, we have a photodiode. You should know it works under reverse bias condition. Whenever photons are incident, it generates electron hole pairs and current is generated. Very simple. Next LED, heavily doped. Under forward bias condition, it works. Again, same here when the diode is forward biased, electrons are sent from where to where? N to P. And holes are sent from P to N. At the junction, the concentration of minority increases compared to the, what do you say, equilibrium concentration. So what happens is, excess minority carriers are, they recombine here. And due to recombination, the energy is released in the form of photons. That's it. Next solar cell. Again, you should know it is heavily doped with N-type, lightly doped with P-type, metal contacts at the top and bottom. So what happens? It works on three stages. First is generation. So light falls on the depletion region, electron hole, electron hole pairs generate. Then separation, electron moves to the N, holes move to the P. Collection, electron is collected on the top of the metal contact, holes are connected at the bottom. That's it. Next, this part is very important. One question you can easily expect. Now, what is that? It's analog and digital. Earlier, we had everything of analog. Now, we have everything of digital. Digital is basically 0101. We heard so much about digital India, digital India. So, that's 0101, okay? So, here, basic thing and most important thing is everything works on two decisions, either yes or no. Our computer doesn't understand our language, the way we say. So, what it understands? Yes or no, yes or no. So, we have logic gates to convert every decisions, every form of our statements into yes and no form. What are these basic logic gates? And, or, and not, and universal, NAND and NOT. See, NOT gate is nothing but one input, one output. So whenever you send something like a yes, like a no, it will translate it to yes. Whenever you send a yes, it will say it to no. Or you can say, whenever you send a true value, it will return you false. Whenever you send a false value, it will return you true. That is NOT gate. It is also called an inverter gate. It inverts, okay? Next is OR gate. It basically multiplies. So like 0 and 0, you multiply, you get 0. 0 and 1, you multiply, you get 1. Sorry, 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 students. R means addition. Okay, so whenever you add 0 plus 0, you get 0. Whenever you add 0 plus 1, it is 1. Whenever you add 1 plus 0, it is 1. Whenever you add 1 plus 1, it will be 1. Okay, so and then what is NOR gate? It is nothing but OR gate and then invert it. OR gate and then a NOR gate in front of it. So it inverts it. So you got 0, it will change it to 1. 1 changes to 0. 1 again changes to 0. 1 again changes to 0. So very simple. Next we have AND gate. AND is basically we have A and B. We multiply A dot B. So here if both are true, then only we will get true. Clear in the AND case. Okay. If both are false or any one is false, it is false. So 0 into 0, 0. 0 into 1, 0. 1 into 0, 0. 1 into 1 is only 1. Okay. If you convert, if you want an AND of that, if you want a NAND of that, it will be 0 will be converted to 1, 0 again 1, 0, 1, 1 to 0. So that's it for all of the semiconductors part. We will come with the PYQ very fast. Okay. So do revise and maths. We are trying to come up with a 2020 solutions of live in YouTube. Do join us at 11 a.m. sharp. Or if you want a separate time like around uh, 5 or 6 in the evening, you can do that also. Do comment us on the comment section what time you want to join. We'll be solving the live 2020 paper and we'll be giving you the tips how to solve the paper, how to do each and everything like very properly, calmly and do the best in your exam. Thank you.